let's uh, continue on this series on building a uh, building unity in a team we're at session 18 uh, there's 36 session we are right in the middle keeping the main thing the main thing keeping the main thing the main thing and scripture today is Proverbs chapter 28 verse 19 the one who works his hands will have plenty of food but whoever chase fantasies will have his view of poverty let's come to the Lord in prayer father we thank you that you created us as relational beings we thank you father you called us to be in a team so that we can learn interdependence Father, we know uh, in commitment procrastination is always have been a problem and we have been so far going through various action how to counter this procrastination as we study your word today you know keep the main thing the main thing Help us to understand, to overcome procrastinations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. While well, we continue on this uh, five dysfunctions of a team, a fly, uh, we're spending a lot of time on L, that is lack of commitment. And lack of commitment uh, is also part of the, the bigger problem that which we call procrastination. Today we're going to um, look at keeping the main thing, the main thing. The verse we have just read um, um, for talking about people who work with hands, who have plenty of food, but those who end, follow anti pursuits will have plenty of poverty. So it's contrast, uh, contrasting with people we truly uh, uh, have a good work ethics and people who are pursuing or anti-pursuits. There's a big contrast between the two. And pursuing anti-pursuit, empty pursuit, is just like uh, when we um, don't set priorities for the things that we need to do. And nature tells us when we do not set priorities, we will tend to take the path of the least resistance it's just like following the path of the least existence which is why the river is banked and every time i land in kuching uh, last time i fly a lot i look at from the sky you know the kuching is beautiful uh, but the whole piece of land was uh covered with um just before the airport that you can see the river bending and and it's true in our life if we follow the path of least resistant in other words if we pick and sort out what we need to do and work on the simplest and the trivial things in life in many cases this will leave more difficult and important tasks to the last and this is disaster in the end and the last will never come and worst come before the action needs to be complete need to be completed which puts us into stress of many kinds and many regrets and this is why it's so important for us to learn about keeping the main things the main thing and this is the fourth action of overcoming uh, procrastinations uh, is to know to keep the main thing the main thing so let us look into the three things, you know, uh, set the right priority, free out the hindrance, and then enter the race of God. And with this three strategy, we will help, hopefully will help us to keep the main thing first. In Luke chapter 2, I uh, uh, spoke about Jesus uh, and his parents, I think it was age, age of 12, they went to Jerusalem for Passover festivals. And you, if we remember the story because uh, after when they're, they're returning home, and there's a mazes of people and, and obviously Joseph 
and Mary uh, found it you know, where is the uh, uh, baby uh, no, boy Jesus where, where is he so they started looking for him among their relatives and friends when they couldn't find him they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there it's only three days after they finally discovered him in the temple sitting among the religious leaders listening to them and asking questions and all who heard Jesus even at the age of 12 they were all amazed at his understanding and his answers his parents didn't know what to think you know after searching for three days for his son obviously he's getting a bit frustrated and he's, that's when Mary told his son he said son why have you done this to us your father and I have been frantic searching for you everywhere but why did you need to search jesus asked didn't you know i must be in my father's house i like the king james uh, translation don't you know i had to be in my father's business in actual fact if we are the children of god we must be every day in the father about the father business so what jesus said did you know that I must be about my father's business? This should be our response all the time as well. Is your life about the father's business? If your life is about father's business, your core value will reflect this most important thing in your life. That you must put God first in everything. And first seek his kingdom and his righteousness. So what is the most important thing? Jesus... You know, when Jesus returned back to ascend to heaven, he left the most important great commission to his disciples. And I believe we are alive. We have a mandate, every one of us. Life is a mission. If your life do not have a purpose, you will just follow the old vain pursuit and then will come to nothing. That's why I think I... I mentioned to our CE students and said we must keep our kingdom entrepreneurship our core value must always reflect the great commissions of God we must go and make disciples of the nations and this important knowledge will help us to prepare our priority list the main thing has to do with something of eternal value and significance whether uh, and, and, and we know with the um, minor things, you know, we don't want to major in minors and then always relate to empty pursuits of life. So we keep the main thing. The main thing is to put God first and His agenda first before ours. So we must seek His kingdom and His righteousness and the rest shall be added unto you. When we always quote that verse from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but very few people will understand when that verse in the context is talking about economy. Economists will tell you, you know, what we eat, uh, drink, in the food, drink, in your shelter, the three most fundamental things to keep your life. That's what Jesus tells you. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes look at the birds in the air jesus said they do not sow or reap or gather into barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they? who of you or by worrying can add a single hour to his life and why do you worry about clothes Consider how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in his glory was adorned like the one of this. And the context, Jesus is actually talking about a kingdom economy. Kingdom economy is not an economy of lack. It's a kingdom economy of abundance. If you put God first, all the rest of the thing will be added unto you. If you seek first his kingdom, 
and his righteousness. The most troubled thing, uh, the, the worst thing is we worry about it. We should have no anxiety about anything. But in living, you know, with thanksgiving first, we know God's going to be give us the best and let your request be made known to God and the peace of God will surpass all human understanding, will keep our heart and mind in Christ Jesus. We need to understand the world and its flesh shall be passed away. In 1 John 2.17 Whoever does the will of God will live forever. So we must do his things first. And how do we do that? How do you set up priority? Our heart is important. You know, we set up priority because what our heart thinks. As a man thinks, he's not so he sees. So the eyes or hearts must be enlightened. Paul uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, at the end of the message, he was praying for the saints of the fishes. He's asking the Lord to give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they have a knowledge of Christ. And through that, he, the eyes of their hearts may be enlightened. He, he told the Ephesians that you may know the hope of his calling, the rich the riches of his glorious inheritance that is in the saints. If you know what your inheritance is, if you know your heavenly father is going to give you a house, you don't look at just a small cut box. The glorious inheritance of saints is nothing can compare in this world. So what God's going to give us, if we understand his power and his authority and the, how you finish off efficient one is but like the old thing will be subject to this body we are part of the body Christ's body the church the fullness of Christ who feel all in all and if we know this in our heart that the heartbeat of the Father is for the earth to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covered the sea then we will put our priorities right and this is something that we need to check every day are we missing the plot in Hebrew chapter 12 verse 1 um, I always use that verse to talk about three things to free up fuel up, and fire up how to free us about it is that we, since we're surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses he said let us draw off everything that hinders and sins that easily entangles he said, devil is not fighting where you are, but fighting where you're going. He don't want you to reach the destiny of God. That's why the Hebrew writer said, let us run with perseverance. The rest that mark up for us. Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 11 and 12, he said, And for this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed. And I am convinced that He is able to guide what I have uh, entrusted to Him until that day. So, you see, as we have this, in, 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 we have fellowship all the time, as we meet together, all the, some people just forget to meet. You know, you, you will die off, your fire will gone off. But, if we don't forget to anyway, way, we encourage one another, especially the day of his return is drawing near. And we must always have this mindset that not we not thought that we have done it, we have achieved it or anything like that, but we press on like Paul, forgetting what is behind, but straining towards what is ahead and press toward a goal to win the prize that God has called us heaven with in Christ. I want to go through quickly on three very practical examples how to free up hindrances, how to set priorities and um, and that's why I said three wise implementations. Um, the first thing is called eat a flock for breakfast. I think those who have um, many motivational speakers as using this as an example to illustrate the value of tackling our most daunting, difficult, and dreadful tasks first without spending a great deal of time 
uh, starting at the flock. So I think this is Mark Twain who said that, I think. Uh, procrastination is the robber of time. And there are only 60 seconds in each minute, 60 minutes in each one hour, and 24 day hours in a day. You don't get more or less. If we put off until later the biggest flock, we may find him nibbling our thoughts throughout the day until we actually sit down and munch our way with it. Wouldn't it be great, if you great to know that if we did it and it can no longer quietly nagging us? That's why procrastination is like the tides of the ocean. It comes in and goes up. It really, really are we constantly able to take action on everything we need to or want to. So this is why you know, eating the flock in the breakfast, I mean, you take the most hardest thing. <laughs> I don't know how eating a flock in a breakfast would sound like, but I think it's a bit of a elaboration talking about if you take out the most daunting and difficult task first. As we can list many reasons we procrastinate, remember that some flocks are amongst the deadliest animals on earth. Our desire to succeed means we must overcome our dread of eating the flocks. So no more procrastination. Jump on your most, you know, your calling. It could be daunting for in you know, the first thing. So, and the second thing I think we're all very familiar. Uh, we'll talk about it many times. You know, a professor was showing the students how to, what the order, putting put in the rock first and then pebbles and then sand. And then you can pour, and I think the professor poured a, a can of beer in there. So, but if you put water first, you will not be able to put all the, rock the rock that stands for the most important thing in your life pebbles are probably less important thing but saints represent very trivial things in our life and there is way it always goes if you fill your bottle with saint you can no longer fill any rock in there so i think this is about priority but i think one of the tools that we management people always use is called uh coffee trial quadrant i think we um you know, the coffee dryer, you know, the first quadrant is important deadlines with high urgency. The first quadrant contains the tasks and responsibilities that need immediate action. So we call urgent, right? But not necessarily important. But quadrant two, long-term development and strategizing, which is the important things, but they're not urgent. Okay. The second quadrant is for items that are important without requiring immediate actions. Uh, Covey points out that this quadrant should be used for long-term strategizing. So quadrant three is distraction with many uh, high urgency. Third quadrant is full of urgent things and um, reserved for tasks that is urgent without being important. So Covey commands minimizing or even eliminate these tasks as they do not contribute to your output. So, and quadrant four is the worst, okay, activities with little or no value at all. So that's why we should always try to best stay at the quadrant two. It's called the COVID quadrant. I think those who are in the management were very familiar with these tools. But run, how do we run with perseverance and persist until the end, to the race God had set before us? We must be free up so that we can run with this uh, uh, with endurance. We, so do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great rewards it brings us. Passion and endurance is what we need now, so that we will continue to do God's will. Then we will receive all that He has promised. And remember, endurance is important. If we endure with Him, we reign with Him. So endurance is very important. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 to 12, he said, And do this, understand the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is near now. And when we first lived, first believed, the night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So we must put on, uh, put aside the deeds of the darkness, but put on the armor 
of light. So we, we do not beat the air endlessly. We do not, we, we, have a, we need to have a clear strategy, just like what Paul said. You know? We are running a race to win an imperishable crown. So lastly, you know, keep the main thing we need to uh, we need to understand the concept of how to enter the race of God. Sometimes it's so easy to get overwhelmed by many things that we need to do, and totally lost the plot that God has for our life. Therefore, it is important and it's good for us to pause and reflect. That's why keeping Sabbath is important. You need to have rest. You know, be still and know that He's God. And what we are doing and asking ourselves honest question: Am I responding to God's calling by faith, or now I'm just going by the circle and just like in the wilderness? These are the questions we should ask ourselves. And so, are we toiling under the lies of the devil? Be careful. Am I trying to please man rather than God? Am I too exhausted? And losing my joy in serving the Lord? Am I responding with fear or faith in all my life challenges? That's why it's important to enter His race. You know, He who wait upon Him will renew and soar like eagles. The word wait upon the Lord is, is not, you know, um, Trapping on the same ground, doing nothing, but is aligning ourselves with God, our spirit with His spirit, and knowing a clear purpose of what we're doing. You know, plan purposefully, prepare prayerfully, proceed positively, and persevere persistently. So planning by waiting, aligning ourselves is very very important so that we can soar like eagles we are called to be eagles we're not called to be chickens we are like eagles so that we'll run we're not growing weary and we'll walk and will not faint and we must strive to enter into a more beautiful race just like what hebrew chapter 4 talking about you know a god's people you know more of god and less of ourselves race in god and bring a renewed uh, 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 resting in God will bring about the renewal and the power to finish what to finish what He called us to do. The Hebrew writers um, told us that the promise of entering His rest still stands. So that's why He tells us, "Let us be careful; none of us deem to have fallen short of it." So we must respond. We don't want to be like the unbelieving Israel. That's why they die. Oh. In the desert, we must strive to enter His rest. Enter into His rest to increase. He must increase. I must increase. And when we rely on God's power, we can do a lot more than what humanly possible. So it's so important that, as this, uh, the Hebrew writer said, there remains a Sabbath rest for the God's people. For whoever enter into God's rest, also rest from his own work. That means you stop struggling with let God be God and just as God did it from his. So let us therefore make every effort to enter into the rest, so that no one will fall by following the same pattern of disobedience. And lastly, each team member must take a position and respond to the individual call by faith as an effective and efficient team. And as a team, as we keep the main things, the main, uh, the main thing, as we set priority, it's important for the team members to know how God shaped them, their spiritual gift, their hearts, their ability, their personality, and their experience. Shape, you know, the, how each of us shape us. Because God's, you know, we, we, do, we must not think of ourselves more highly than we ought. But we must think of ourselves more with sober judgment according to the measure of faith God has given us. Some God gives a thousand, some, a, a thousand and one talent, some two talent and five talents. But the important thing is, we need to understand, you know, each of us must, uh, you know, uh, we are one, 
we are all parts of the same body. Uh, and then we have different gifts according to the grace that's given us. And we must use those gifts faithfully. Say this is what first Peter 4, uh, chapter uh, chapter 4, verse 10 says, each of you should be should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. A faithful steward of God's grace in its various form. Yeah. Thousands of different gifts. If anyone speaks, that he should do so as the one speaks the very oracle of God. And if one serves, he should do with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through our Lord Jesus Christ. So important for us to build a team that take position and this tipping point of the team that will overcome many difficulties ahead. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for helping us to understand, to keep our priority right, keep the main thing, the main thing. Otherwise, we lose the plot, your plot, for the destiny that you called us. To. We know the devil is not fighting where we are, but fighting where we're going. Help us not to listen to the devil's lies, but truly understand what is the most important thing you have for us is to respond by faith to your calling to your great commission in jesus name we pray amen